Hello everyone, this is Gail, and this is my scrap bucket. Remember I used to keep my scrap in little bowls on my table, and in order to clear up some space so I'd have some working space, I decided to just start dumping it into a plastic shoebox. And I'm, as you probably have heard, I'm getting ready to move. And I really need to get some of this stuff used up. So what I decided to do was to take some of this scrap and maybe make um, a scrap cane. Now I have made scrap canes before, which is just this. This is chopped up clay that I rolled into a log. And I use these for different things but I'm not going to use that today. And as, I'm going to move this over off my work surface a little bit. These are some scraps that were left on my table that I need to get rid of. Um, and you can see here, these are a combination of blue and green, which are these blues and greens. That's how I came up with this. So I'm just going to lay those in the middle. I need a place for some reds, but I want to um, just show you some ideas on how to use up some of your scrap. Now, some of you are probably new enough that you aren't, you don't have a lot of scrap. I'm just trying to peel some of this stuff off. This is left from my Patreon tutorial that I just finished. But what I'm going to do, see here's a piece, the end of a cane that's purple and blue. So I'm going to put that sort of in between the purple and the blue. I'm just trying to get light colors together. And uh, this is green and black, so this is just going to go in with the green. Here's some more green and blue. I had more of that left than I thought. Here's just some blue from a blue cane. Don't have any red, so I use the pinks and reds there. And you'll see some of it's got some black on it. Some of it's going to be metallic. Let's see what we've got here. I'm just trying to dig. I don't really need a lot of black and white, and unfortunately a lot of mine is black and white. There's some more green. Um, here, well, just I'm just gonna just sort of place it in an area where the other light colors are. See, this has got several colors in it, so I'm just gonna kind of dump that maybe over there. And you just keep digging through your scrap. I need something to dig with. It's my fingers are not doing a very good job. Let me. Um, maybe just use one of my tools to dig down in here. And here's some more green and yellow. I need to get some yellows. I've got lots of greens, lots of blacks, lots of uh, blues, but I need some yellow. That's got some yellow in it. This is a got black on the outside, so that'll dull that a little bit. And I need some reds. Here's some orange. I could put that in here. Maybe lay that next to the reds. But just you know, go through your scrap, see what you've got, kind of separate it into colors, which is why I was keeping it in my, uh, in those little bowls. Let me get these big chunks out, because I don't want any big chunks. Then maybe it'll be easier. These are like the ends of canes. I'm sorry you can't watch me as I dig, but I just don't have space. So 
So why don't I just stop the camera, since you really can't see what I'm doing. I'm going to stop the camera, and I'll be back after I've accumulated some scrap. Okay, you can see that I've got my uh, scrap kind of separated, and I ended up throwing in some things that had white in it just to add a little bit of interest. I might put some of that over here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to ball up each color into a, you know, I'm going to keep it flat. I'm going to try to make this into a rectangle. And I will use my my roller to get it rolled out. And you can see it's all different colors and shades and everything. Now you don't have to separate your colors like I did. Uh, if you like, you can keep, um, just mix it all up. I just thought I would try a rainbow type effect. And what I'm going to do this is really too much. I was afraid I wasn't going to have enough, and I think I've ended up with too much. But I have an idea. So, but try to get this into some, into like a rectangle shape, because you are going to want to try to get all of your projects the same size. When I say projects, you're going to see what I'm talking about in a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and start, and I'm going to do this the same thing. See, I got this into sort of a trying, uh, rectangle. And I'm going to do the same thing for each of the color groups. I'll end up with four or five, maybe six, probably not six, but at least five or four different uh, additional um squares. So I will do that and then I'll be back. One thing I did want to show you, because I have some solid purple here, I'm going to chop this one up. Just so that I can get rid of some of that solid purple. And how much you chop it is entirely up to you. Just to where you think you can mix this up and so it's not going to be quite so solid. So I'll do the same thing with the blue because there was a lot of solid blue in there. So that was just, this is just a little added tip. So I will be back when I'm finished. Okay, you can see that I have got five different blends here. Some of them are skinnier than others because I was trying to get them all the same thickness and the same length. So, it you know, it's this is not a precise cane. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to roll this with my roller. And this will take a while because I need to get it rolled out enough to go into my pasta machine. And I'm wondering... if I should do these separate. Let me do that. I'm going to do this separate just because it's more clay than I originally planned on. And I'm going to try to get this flat enough. And there's part of my rose cane. For those of you that have done my rose cane, that must have been the end. So I'm just going to try to flatten this on each end. And I'm going to do the same with the rest, and then I'll be back. Okay, now I told you I was going to make two canes out of this, so I'm going to cut this in half this way, mainly because I want to be able to get this into my pasta machine and I'm not going to be able to do it at the 
the uh, lengths, the widths that I have. So I'm going to cut this in half. And these will be my two canes. Each one's going to be different because even in this, the colors are going to be different. And I'm going to press these together. And I'm actually going to roll them out a little bit more. Now that there's not so much clay, it'll be a little bit easier. I just want to make sure that I keep it within the width of my pasta machine. And I wish I could show you here and the pasta machine, but that's going to be a little difficult. But hopefully when I move and get my new studio set up, I'll be able to rig it so that you can see more of, of my process. But I'm going to run this through the pasta machine this way because I want to keep all the colors together. You see how much clay I ended up with? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this well, actually, I'm going to look at it. I think I like this side better because it's not so much orange. And I'm going to blend this a couple of times until it looks like, until it looks interesting. Now I'm having to make some decisions because I don't know which side I like the best. I like this because it's more blended colors, but I like this part here, which is, believe it or not, that's that rose cane slice that was in there. So I think I'm going to just, let me run it through one more time. Let me run it through this way, and we'll see what happens. Okay, so there we go. There's one side. And there's the other side. I think I like this because it's less stripey. And what I want to do here is um, back it with, some, with a color. Now I could have taken, matter of fact, I think I will. I was going to use white or black but I use those all the time. But again, we've got so much clay here. I think I'm going to cut the ends off. And I'll make a piece maybe this big. Actually, I think I still will use the white or black because I'm afraid if I mix because of the way I did this if I mix all this together it's going to just end up being mud so I will put the trimmings back in my scrap box and I'm going actually I'll do both of these how about that I will just let me trim these off so that I have straight edges And that will leave me the other half to do the other blends with. And what I want to do is I want to back this with black or white. So I'm going to do one in white and one in black. But I didn't roll this out yet because I wasn't sure exactly what size I was going to need. I think I will do this one in white and this one in black just to show you the difference even though we're using the same colors, just how it turns out different. So let me blend my white out to where it uh, will fit my, fit my clay. I'll be right back. 
Okay, so I have rolled out my white to a number three setting. I'm going to lay it out there, and I'm going to lay this on top. And trim around it. Okay, so there's this color on white. And I'm going to do the same thing with the black. Got something on my work table and I'm not really sure what it is. So let me just wipe it off real quick. But here's my black. And I'm going to take this piece and lay it on the black. Now we know that this is the same color colors because it's from the same sheet. We just, I just cut it in half. And if you're wondering where I'm taking my black and my white, I keep black and white on my table all the time. So I'm just putting the black back with the black and the white back with the white. Alright, so now I've got these. I'm going to try to keep them in the same orientation. And they're different sizes, but that's okay because they're going to be different canes. And I'm going to roll this through the pasta machine again at the number uh, the thickest setting. I've got it all right, on the thickest setting. That's just to make sure that everything is stuck together. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut this end off where the white came out the end. And it goes back into my scrap, but it's a whole lot less than what came out of it. And I'll do the same thing with this. I'll cut this black tail off. And actually, I may go ahead and well, I'll show you how to do it with two different sizes. I'm going to put it this way, long ways, on my work surface. And it is six inches long. So I'm going to cut it an inch wide. On each inch line. The last one I did, I think I cut into five pieces. So what I, all I'm going to do is stack these on top of each other. And it doesn't matter what order, even though I'm, except for the first one, I'm kind of keeping it the same. See how that kind of make, gives it a rainbow effect, which is what I was looking for. But now what we need to do is to kind of compress it.
and make it wider and shorter this way. So you just kind of have to press on each end, pick it up and press in the middle. Turn it over and do it again so that both sides are getting flattened out. This is just how you would reduce a rectangle cane. Or not reduce it, but like un compress it, I guess. Unreduce it. If you want to, you could get an acrylic block and press on the ends, which might be easier than using your hands. And then be sure to pull in the middle because you don't want... Try to keep your sides straight and your ends straight. Sometimes it's not easy to do when you're using your fingers. Well, that's got it into like a workable size. So what I'm going to do here is clean up the edges. Because no matter how you try, you're going to still mess up the edges when you're trying not to do too much off of each side. So now we've got this. And I'm going to measure this and see how wide it is. It's an inch and a quarter. So let me just line it up, center it on an inch mark, because what I want to do is cut it in half. And stack it. Now the decision is, we're going to, you know, we're going to make this into a cane now. And you have to decide what you want in the center. And I think, actually I put this together wrong, because I need to make it so that the black is on the outside. Sorry about that. But now you decide what you want to be your center. And I think I want the green and yellow to be my center. So I'm going to start pressing that in to a point. And I'll keep compressing it because the idea now is to make this into a triangle. And we'll do it this way, the triangle this way. So you can press down. This is going to make a big cane. Actually, what we need to do now is to reduce this. So I'm pressing down and pulling. I 
because we need to make this, oh, about three inches wide. So it's going to make this pretty small. So maybe it won't be as big as I was, I was, I forgot about the reducing part when I said it was going to be a big cane. It's probably not going to be that big at all. Try to flatten out your ends as you go along. Just keep turning it and pulling. You gotta make it longer. Press down and pull. And you're gonna mess up your ends a little bit, but that's okay. That could be the back part of the of the cane. Okay, I've reduced this down and I'm going to cut the ends off so we can see our pattern. And that will get rid of some of these wonky ends. You see what we've, what we've got so far? Now I do notice that when I reduce a triangle, I end up pushing in with my thumbs which kind of malforms the triangle. So I'm going to push down in the center and I'm going to do that all the way around so I can try to get rid of those indentations. I don't care how hard I work, I just can't seem to stop pressing in that center because I'm always pinching the ends. It's not too bad. And it's right about three inches, so let me cut it an inch and a half. I'm going to put these together. going to press this into another triangle. By pressing down in the middle and down on each side, do it slowly. And then you can cut, this will give you a half of a square. So then you can cut it in half. I'm going to just slice that little bulging part off. See those little holes is where I uh, didn't have them totally square, but I can push them together here. I'll just press and you have a square. You can leave it square. I'll leave both of them, I'll leave this square just because the other one is square. And let me do, this is with the black, so let me do this with the one on the white.
and I'll do the same thing. I'll cut this six inches. And just trim up this edge right on the inch line. There we go. And then cut this into six pieces. I'm going to do the exact same thing as I did with the other one. Okay, I have reduced this one down to the three inches. I trimmed off the ends, and so I'm going to trim this at an inch and a half. And put this together. And then put the point down, the point that's going to be your center, which is our yellow. We're going to put that down and we're going to press. Well, I didn't get these stuck together very well, did I? very slowly press down these sides to make it back into a triangle again. Okay, so now that's pressed into a triangle, which is actually a half of a square. So let me trim it again. And press it into a square. This one, I ended up adding a little bit of white because the green was, the yellow and the green was coming through all the way across and it ended up adding a little star in the middle. But there's your two canes made from the exact same colors except we backed one with white and one, one with black. So let me let me come in a little bit. So you can see those. This one's a little bit squigglier because my white was a lot softer than my black was. But there you go. This is one way that you can turn your scrap can scrap clay into something pretty. So, hope you like this. There, just use your imagination. You can do so many things with it. 
you can use just mixtures of clay. It doesn't even have to be colors like this, divided up in colors. I just chose to do it so you could see the the variation from the yellow to the blue to the I mean to the green to the blue to the red and there's a little bit of purple in the middle. So thanks for watching. I'll be back again soon with another polymer clay video. Bye bye.